actually, I find this so extraordinary that in 2022, putting up a sign which says, I don't discriminate, can get you cancelled. We've <laughs> gone mad, haven't we? We have gone mad. I mean, <clears throat> to me, it's, it's, it's about the discrimination mainly. I mean, we, we, we stand with COVID, we stand with Brexit to divide this country, mm. split people against each other. And that's not what it should be about. I mean, COVID, you know, I'm not against vaccination by any means. Mm. And in the early days, it definitely prevented people from getting to hospitals, ICUs. Now, we've seen it with Prince Charles, had it twice. <laughs> Several of my family have had it twice and, and relatives. I have. You've had it. <laughs> touch wood i haven't um but it's not preventing people from getting it anymore it may be preventing people from staying out of hospital but it's not preventing you spreading it yeah. so really we we have to learn to live with it and and to my point of view we've had little or no objections to that sign and the, for the most mm. part it's been support so it was a whole load of hysteria whipped up on social media and by the media yeah as as always um you know, it was a bad news day, perhaps. Um, but, I, you know, this, this country stands... Uh, it's got to stand on its own two feet now. You know, we've, we've chosen Brexit, rightly or wrongly. We've chosen Brexit. Uh, we've chosen Boris, rightly or wrongly. And um, it's time to, to, to... You know, we are leading the way now, as far as COVID goes. Other countries are starting to follow, you know, apart from Canada and New Zealand, perhaps. But generally... Um, what do, you, what do you say, really? I mean, it's ridiculous that in this, we can discriminate, discriminate against people. Yeah, and don't you think it's the countries that have these draconian restrictions that are banning folk from going to a restaurant, from going to a pub, from going to a cinema? They're the countries that seem to be emerging from this divided. So I think it's so important that here in the UK we do lead the world and say... Actually, no, we support bodily autonomy, we support freedom of speech. 98% of people have COVID antibodies, so you can mm. go wherever you like. Absolutely. I mean, it is time. I mean, you know, love him or hate him, Boris has, has got it right, in my opinion. He seems to have ignored um, recommendations recently and has chosen, you know, whether it's to defuse the situation from Partygate, who knows? But the, the point is, I think he's got it right that we should move on now. Mm. We should. Open the country. We need business. You know, what is Spain going to do, France going to do, Italy going to do without tourists? Mm. They, we, we need tourists. They need tourists. You know, and, and for, for mandatory rules like in Italy where you've got to be double vaxxed if you're over 50, I mean, oh, it's about freedom of choice, surely. I mean, Djokovic has decided not to put a vaccine in his body. Mm. That has to be his choice. Absolutely. We're going to be talking about that mm. in just a moment. Your industry, of course, Anthony one of the businesses that was just decimated mm, by mm. these two years of, of lockdowns. Loads of restrictions uh, that you had to do that made absolutely no scientific sense. Do you remember those, those rules like the scotch egg yeah. thing? You've got to be out by 10pm. Oh, by the way, put these little plastic sheets up, even though the science proves they are utterly futile and useless at stopping the spread of COVID. So you had to spend all of the money on that. And then on a whim, the government could just shut you down. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, you know, does COVID know that they're not effective after 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> you know, I mean, what we, did, what we were doing when we, we got people out by 10 is you're driving everyone into a yes. pub or yes. a restaurant to get in there before 10. Yeah. You're all packed together. You're all leaving together. You're all on the train together. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was, was bonkers. Absolute nonsense. Total nonsense. And we should never have accepted it, though, should we, as a society? But it was difficult for folk like you, because what did you do? If, if you broke the rules, you'd have some box-ticking, clipboard-holding local council officials shut you down. Absolutely. I mean, the trouble is that we're not a country that has revolutions, really. Mm. We don't do block motorways. Well, for the most part, we don't block motorways, you know, like the French <laughs> do. the insulate <laughs> Yes, <bomb>. exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, we, we sort of go along with it, and I think, actually, that's what Boris is not doing. He's not going along with it. Um, you know... I'm, about time. I, I, absolutely, about time. But I want to talk about Boris, because you wrote a really interesting uh, column for the Daily Express uh, defending the Prime Minister, actually, which not many people in the media have done. And, and you say, and I'm with you on this, actually... Sick of party gate, 
This is a media obsession. Yeah. We have to move on for the good of the country now. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a bit of a witch hunt. If you actually analyse what's going on in the rest of the world, Ukraine, so China mm. hovering over Taiwan, Myanmar, the, you know, the civil war that's happening there, and we're worried about a few tea parties. Mm. Listen, there are people who've died out there, and that's tragic. And, of course, they must think Boris is absolutely ghastly. And I, I, I support that view. But at the end of the day, it's a few people having drinks, him in there for 10 minutes, having his cake presented to him. It's not good, but it's so small in, it's the, not the, the, in the bigger picture. You know, I no. mean, Tony Blair took us to war and he's now a lord. You know, I mean... No, I agree. I, I think, to me, I wish people would look at it in a different way. I think it shows these rules should never have been in place. They should never have shut down your pubs, your restaurants, mm. because, actually, the people at Number 10 Downing Street weren't scared of no. the virus. They were still socialising. And I just feel like the discussion is all wrong. The rules were ridiculous. And the John Hopkins University study from last week shows lockdowns only reduce deaths by 0.2%. But what we did do is we decimated businesses. We're seeing what's happening with the cost of living crisis now, aren't we? Mm. And actually, mm. that will end up killing more people in the long run. Well, also, you know, the mental problems that, that mm. went on at the time. You know, people, youngsters who are held in prison almost yeah. in their own homes, not allowed out. When that's the time they should be out enjoying themselves. And how did you how did you cope with it mentally, being locked up and not able to run your businesses? Well, I'm a pretty strong character. Um, we we turned to takeaways, um, and they were very successful. And as soon as uh, they relaxed the rules with the garden, luckily the weather wasn't bad. Actually, good old British public tolerated the wind and the rain. Yes, oh my God! And they came I out remember in some sports. meals yeah. that I had. I never want to repeat them, but we were just so desperate, weren't we, to help these businesses out? Yeah. Although, my God, it was it was infuriating.